Yo, yo, you hear me, brother? Yes, sir. What's going on with yo, you, bro? Me. Hey, shit, man. Just chilling, chilling. My apologies, man, for the last couple of days, bro. Just family shit getting in the way. Oh, all good, King. All good, King. I know it's, man, it's been a minute since I uh, had you on the show, man. Yeah, it's been far too long, man. Far too long. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, I've been seeing all this activity, man, that you've been doing this year, man. First and foremost, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you taking the time for this interview, first of all. And, you know, after that, man, I got to salute you for all the work you're doing out here in the culture, man. Like, you really making some impact this year, for real. Like, Thank you, bro. Yeah, man, just hard work. That's all it is, man. Just putting myself to the, you know, put myself to the test. Starting to um, get a little more comfortable in this culture, shit like that. I heard that. I heard that. So the big news recently, man. We get right into it, man. We got B dot versus J C, man. The strike two point five. How you feeling yeah. about that battle? Honored, man. Honored, man. Probably my biggest battle ever in terms of like, you know, because the spotlight is on me now. So when I battled Danny, it was easier to deal with, you know, uh, leading up to it because I wasn't really known. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that much expectation put on that battle per se. So this is a lot different, man. It's on URLs in New York. Um, it's against arguably the best pin in the game. Um, yeah, man, my my biggest battle. I think this is a make or break battle for me for sure. So um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, I'm honored. You know, all of that, all of that mixed together. I heard, I heard that. This battle's tough for me, man, because you and JC are uh, in my personal top five all time, my favorite battlers to watch. So for me personally mm-hmm. picking a winner, it's like it, it's almost like that that verb and hitman thing. So better pick a side. Yeah, you know I'm yeah. saying <laughs> so, man. I, I've been <laughs> I've been looking forward to one of these matchups, man, between, you know what I'm saying, you and somebody else that I really like watching. And I think you and JC, man, got the potential to be one of the best battles this year and ever, really, to be honest. I mean, both of you guys have an exceptional pin, a lot of good content and layered writing that you guys bring to the table. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, man, it's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be crazy. But definitely, I definitely think that um, – this is somewhat of a pin versus pin, uh, you know, type of battle. I wouldn't say that my pin is the greatest is. I wouldn't say that, but you know, just in terms of my style, me being a being a being a lyricist, I don't think he's battled a pin. Like I don't think he's had a pin battle in quite some time. I think his last like pin versus pin battle was probably, uh, I don't know, QP. You know what I'm saying? I think him versus QP was like his last mm. pin versus pin. Battle that I could think of, you know what I'm saying? So this is another pin versus pin battle for him. Um, and this is probably my first pin versus pin battle outside of, outside of Danny, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's going to be a rough one, bro. Trust me. JC is one of my personal favorites too. So I, I get it, bro. I understand. I heard that. I heard that. So with, you know, you guys battling on this strike card, man, and obviously this whole card kind of comes from the, controversy about a battle rap strike taking place and everybody kind of just feeling like smack url beasley ain't really giving out the paper the way that they feel they should be getting the paper i mean what was your take on the whole battle rap strike the funny shit is i was off twitter for a while i like deleted all social media off my phone just so i could focus on the battle um and when I came back, yeah, that's I was I was seeing all that strike shit. So I was trying to I was trying to catch myself up on it. I thought something actually happened. Um, I pride myself on being on, on being a stickler when it comes to the facts and the research. So when I found out that these brothers was just kind of like throwing numbers up in the air and they they didn't really they couldn't really validate what they were saying and they couldn't really substantiate their argument. I was just kind of like, you know, this shit is kind of like fugazi, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like a waste of time. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, y'all just wasting time, you know, creating tension with the people you're supposed to be in business business with, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to look at URL like an employer, but 
you got to look at them like a business partner. You're doing business with them, and you 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 you're messing up your business. If you if you talking business out in the public, and you ain't even got your facts right, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know who the battlers were in particular, but um, but yeah, man, when I seen it, I off top I just knew it was some fugazi shit because I because when I seen them talking about 2.5 million, I was just like, bro, there's no way. There's no way that they, there's no way they're making that much money, bro. Y'all got to be a little more realistic about what y'all saying. So, um, while I do understand if if anybody feels slighted financially, of course, speak up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Conduct your business, do what you got to do. I just think that um, when you already have done good business with people for so long, why would you think that they are all doing bad business with you? You know what I'm saying? And if you feel like that. And that's probably a conversation you should have behind closed doors. That's what I would think. No, I hear you on that. It's, it's always interesting to me when I hear battlers talk about Smack or King of the Dot or any of these leagues. They need to pay more or they're just making all this money off of us. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you create a battle rap name, you're officially your own brand and business. So you set your own rate and what you feel like you're worth. And when you at that table, it's not their job to give you more money. It's their job to save as much money as possible. So if you negotiate right. a price at that table with them and they pay you a certain rate, that's what you negotiated for. If you wanted more, you've got to be willing to go ahead and stand on it like, no, nah, I need more than that. And be willing to sit out if if need be. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Not only that, you have to be able to substantiate your claim, though. You can't even be talking business and if you can't bring up like analytics. You know what I'm saying? If you can't break down why you feel you're worth whatever amount, which is which is a real difficult thing to do in battle rap because there are cards and the fan, and there's multiple battles on on the cards. So battle rap fans are usually fans of battle rap like you may have like a low percentage of the fan base that only comes for one battler but the reality is a large majority i'd probably say 80 to 90 percent of battle rap fans that attend these events or order the pay-per-view they order them to see multiple battles you know what i'm saying so you can't really specify whether or not people are coming to see you or not to try to validate or negotiate how much you're worth so it gets tricky. You got to really know what you're doing when, you, when you're trying to talk that talk about, you know, business and what you work battle rap wise, man, you got to really, you got to be able to show that some type of way. No, that's a fact right there, man. I feel like a lot of battle rappers, they kind of, I think a lot of them feel they should be getting paid more based on what the next man is saying that he's getting versus what yeah. they really are bringing to the table. Right. Oh, it's yeah, it's interesting, agree. man. The strike lasted about six hours, so it really wasn't too long of a strike. Yeah, man, I pretty much knew that was going to happen when I seen it. I was like, this, that doesn't make any sense, man. You know, because my gripe with URL was a PG gripe, you know what I'm saying? But I would never have a gripe with URL um, in terms of their stature and what they can provide for artists. So that's why it's a little it's, – it's, it's weird to see it from artists who have already been successful on that platform. You know what I mean? Like, you've already been given the platform to be successful. You've already been in business with this company. You know, um, what's the right? Like, what's the hang-up? You know what I mean? But obviously it was based off fraudulent numbers, uh, whether they be the pay-per-view, uh, the, the revenue from the pay-per-view stream, or, battle, like you say, battle rappers lying about what they get. So – I get how I can get people emotional and get them frustrated, but man, people got to do better research, man. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. So I was looking, you know, saying your resume this year and all the work that you've been doing. Um, I remember the last time I talked to you a minute ago, you were saying when it came to battle rap, it was more so like picking the the opponents, your eyes correctly. Like if you not just battling just for the sake of battling, but battling if there was something that you could talk about or bring up, something where you could have a, a form of a conversation with the other battler. And I'm looking this year, yeah. man, to Mike P and now to JC and Sway. I mean, are you still on that uh, that philosophy, or are you more now 
like just battling whoever is a uh, competition out here. No, absolutely. I'm I'm well, here's what it is now. I I I see both of those concepts together. I always want to have something to talk about, but then I, I do want to compete with whomever gets thrown in front of me. I think I'm good enough to compete with whomever. So what I found out about myself that is if I push myself to the limit, I can make a conversation. Um, out of out of any opponent really. Instead of me like looking at people like that have like obvious conversations to be had. Um, I want to push myself and dig a little deeper when they give me certain opponents and figure out ways, you know, to, to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like like even with the Mike P joint, you know, it's like, okay, here's another white boy. We're about to hear a, a, a bunch of same shit we heard against Strick, and uh, and we didn't hear that. We heard something different. We heard a different topic come out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Sway 7, he's going to talk about him being old, or even, or, or he's going he gonna to touch on the uh, – the uh, money bag saying nigga situation, yeah, yeah, we know that, but you don't know how I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? So I think that's the for me that's the thrill of it to see how I could push my pen and really um, narrate these stories and uh, weave this shit together. And then the same thing with JC, it's like, oh, what is B not gonna say? He don't got nothing to say to JC, which is true. I, I don't have nothing to say to JC, which is which is the fun part. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's pushing me to be creative. And it's pushing me to uh, create dialogue that uh, that most other people probably can't find. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited, man. I, I'm nervous because JC's incredible, but I'm really excited about you know where it's taking me and how it's pushing me. I heard, I heard that. So just looking at you know what I'm saying battle rap right now, and you know what I'm saying the current state of you know, certain events going on and different battles, you notice the people who stand out when it comes to their performances and what they give back to the people. And you notice with yourself, I don't think you've had a performance that I can think of at all that somebody could say when they left the building, they didn't feel like you were one of the top performers of the night or at least had the best round of the night. You know what I'm saying? Do you make like a... Is that like a concentrated effort to have like the the most impactful round, the the performance everybody's talking about, or are you just going in there competing and letting the performance do the talking? I think I'm just going there competing, man. I never really go into it thinking like, oh, let me, I want to shine tonight. I want to, you know, I want to have performance at night. Or I don't, no, nah, I never really, that's not really a, um, a goal of mine. You know what I'm saying? I just go, I think I, I think I'm naturally like that. Like I naturally turn up like that. Like whether whether I'm arguing or I'm debating or whatever, you know what I'm saying. I'm passionate about the things I'm rapping about, so it's gonna naturally come off, you know, in that in that way. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna naturally be turned up and all that, but it ain't. It's not preconceived or anything. It's kind of just like right there in the moment, bro. For real, I, I just I feed off the crowd. I feed off the energy on the stage, and, and that's just that's just naturally who I am. I heard that. So there's this question I have for you, and it's something that you said a while back on one of the uh, Ruin Your Day Watchers. Shout out to Avocado. I think you were on there with Geechee, and it was the Lux and Clips battle. And you were making a comment about how battle rap doesn't appreciate real rappers, like people who can really rap, and uh, how they call it filler. Um, For Mm -hmm. you personally, like, what is your take on it with uh, the whole filler to punch, you know, punch lines? Or do you believe it is a thing called like filler? Do you believe there is filler? Or do you feel like it's just good rap? I think it's good rap. I think it's good rap. Um, everything doesn't have to be a punch line. Like everything doesn't have to be an entendre. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just dope to connect a thought. Sometimes it's just dope to complete a sentence while rhyming. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's the essence of, of, of being an MC, like being able to connect thoughts and, and say things, but just rhyme it, like just have a conversation just and just rhyme your conversation. I think that's the whole point of the shit. I think that's what, that's what all the great MCs in, in the industry, quote, unquote, the industry, or the mainstream, whatever you want to call it, all the great MCs are just great rhymers. They're great at connecting words. They don't necessarily have a thousand entendres or a thousand lines like 
JC, I mean, um, JC. Look, I'm thinking about this motherfucker so much. Uh, Jay Z, <laughs> Jay Z don't, Jay Z don't, um, he don't have like a thousand punchlines in his records or entendres in his records. He's just, he's just rhyming dope shit. He's saying clever witty shit and he's saying real shit and he's rhyming it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with like Eminem, uh, Voice to Five Nine, uh, Black Thought. You know, um, man, I can go on for days. You know, the the guys that really rap well and, and just rhyme words and connect thoughts, man, they, they're not up there giving you a thousand punchlines. They just dope and see. They just know how to rap. And I just feel like for whatever reason, the battle rap fans have been just accustomed to just reacting to punchlines only. It's like they just, they cannot appreciate somebody up there just rapping well, which is fucking mind-boggling to me because if it was on a record, they would love it. You know what I mean? But I guess acapella battle rap, every every three to five seconds, they need to hear a punchline, you know, and that's just how it goes. But for me personally, man, I'm still a stickler about pure rap skills, so I'm going to never stop rapping. I might try to I might try to up the punch count, but no, nah, I'm, I'm going to always rap, though, at the end of the day. All right. Where do you think that change, like, when do you think it started in battle rap? Because I remember – Back at one time, like real rappers, that was like the requirement. Like you had to rap. You know what I'm saying? And if you couldn't rap or you didn't have enough rap, you would get laughed at. You would get kicked out certain circles. Like, nah, we don't want you up over here. Like if you're not really just rapping. And now all of a sudden it's turned into the punch, wordplay, entendre, frenzy culture. Like when do you think that change occurred? I think that occurred with, with Conceited, you know, and that whole movement and, um, you know, the Suns and all that. I think they brought in a new style, which is cool. You know, it's cool to have new styles. It's just got to be, like, got to be diverse. You know, everybody can't be trying to do that. I mean, so I think after Conceited, and after Conceited, it was the B-Magics of the world, and then Chilla came with his style, Scheming. Um, and I just think a lot of, you know, different guys came into the game and they just kind of, like, stop rapping. And I want to be clear. Like, I'm not saying they're not rhyming. Yeah, of course they're rhyming their words, but it's like no cadence, no flow, no bounce. You know what I'm saying? No fluidity. It's just kind of like they just up there talking just just as long as they land a punch or as long as they deliver the scheme. And, um, yeah, I, I would say it started with Conceited. I would say he, he was the uh, patriarch of that, if you will. He started it, and then everybody kind of just, like, followed that format or came up with their own to just say, oh, I don't have to, I don't have to have like a certain cadence. I can just like slow down my style all the way and just talk and just break every syllable down and do this and do that. And, you know, kind of went from there. And that's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing when, when it became like the standard for, for dope battle rap. That's the bad thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, like they'll, nowadays they'll call somebody like disaster whack and disaster is one of our best, rappers in battle rap just in terms of just rhyming. He can rhyme for a whole, he can, he can rhyme a, one sound for a whole round. You know what I mean? Like, I could do that as well. I damn near have done that before in certain rounds where I'm I literally, I'm rhyming one sound. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and that's just being a dope MC. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, I, I'm not taking away from the punters or, or you know the conceders of the world. I just think it needs need to be more diversity. You know what I'm saying? We need to appreciate rappers back in this in this game. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's going to change though. I think we're in the age of the punch, and that's just what it is. No, I, it, it's funny. The battle rap fans they will call it filler, and they don't really like rappers rapping. But the funniest thing is to me is when you look at the culture the best battle rappers all time and currently are all good rappers. Like, I don't think there's anybody who has just become great. That wasn't a, like a grid or great rapper. Like I'm talking about, if you look at your calicos, you look at yourself, Gotti, surf, Lux, hollow, mook, verb, y'all all great rappers. Y'all all can rap really well. And it's like y'all, like, some of the top names of the culture. But the fans right. don't appreciate what, you know what I'm saying, what you guys are, but you guys still are that great. Like, it's it's crazy how that works, man. Yeah, it's weird, man. It's it's fucking weird. And like I said, 
they rather hear rapping on the beat. If it's a cappella battle rapping, they need a punchline every every five seconds, bro. That's just that's just how their ears is trained, I guess. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, we're talking all this battle rap stuff, man. Let's get into the music side of the game, man. When when, when can we expect this new beat out music to hit the streets, man? Huh? Man, I really wish I had an answer for you, bro. I know every time we talk, we talk about this, man. But I'd have been through so much shit in the in the industry in the game, man. Like it's like I'm I'm currently in a situation where I'm trying to like get about this deal, or at least get the deal um, to a to a amicable terms. Like in terms of like, look, y'all want this, I want that. Let's just get this over with. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of at odds with this little independent label that I signed with. So, um, I don't know, man. I'm trying to get that all squared away. Um, I had an album that was that was dope, but time has passed, and I could I just you know after time passes, you just feel like you could do better or you could change some things. So, I'm going back in the lab soon. Um, I'm kind I kind of put the studio shit on hold to really really focus on battle rap, but I'm going back in the lab soon. Um, to drop some shit, man. Um, I have a record. Actually, I have a record. I'm, I'm hoping to drop in a couple weeks. I'm hoping to drop this one record called Inward. Um, so hopefully I can get that out. I probably just for for like legal reasons and shit. I probably just drop it on my SoundCloud instead of putting it on iTunes and Spotify and Tidal and all that. I probably just drop uh, this record. I, I want to drop probably on my SoundCloud in a couple weeks, man. So I'll definitely keep you updated on that. I appreciate you always asking about the music too, man. But I wish I had a good answer for you, bro. I really don't. Uh, man, I always had to make sure I ask about the music because the one thing for me, because I've been watching and been a part of Battle Rap since I was a kid in the 90s. And one thing I always remembered is that I don't really remember it being called Battle Rap or this is a battle rapper. It was just rappers who battled to prove who was best so they could get their music out. It always came back to the music. It only changed in this era where now it's battle rap first, and sometimes music is just non-existent. People are just battling now, you know. So for right, me, right. I always want to bring the focus back to what this is. This is hip hop, man. It's about that music. Yeah, it's about battling and being competitive and lyrical and all that, and that's good. But at the same time, the music is where it's at, and I feel like sometimes people kind of lose sight of that. Especially a lot of fans, they're like, "Ah, oh, battle rappers don't make good music." But then you got dudes like yourself who made quality music and albums before. You know what I'm saying? Gotti just got through dropping one. I know you guys got the LSC thing popping. So it's like there's so many people out here doing good quality music. And, you know, I always just want to make sure I bring that up because that's something that I feel should be even more put out there in about rap culture is people's work in that music. Nah, yeah, you're right, bro. That's an absolute fact. I appreciate it, man. I got to catch up, man. I got to catch up to the homie Gotti, man. He dropped his album, got videos popping and shit, bro. I'm like, I'm inspired, man. I'm, I definitely, I'm definitely trying to get my shit together, man, so I can drop my shit. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to have everything. I will say this. I'm hoping to have everything squared away by November. So mm. let's just, uh, let's just uh, hope for that, man. When it comes to, like, with the music, I know you're battling and your name's popping and battle rap and you become one of the, our, like, the top names of the culture. You know what I'm saying? What do you, how do you keep that love still going for the music? Like, when you you got all this battle rap and everybody's giving you, you know, all this praise and everything and giving you compliments, you know what I'm saying? But then you still have this music that you still have out there that you want to work on? How do you keep that love going for it? Um, because at the end of the day, the music is like who I really am. You know what I mean? It, the music allows me to be introspective. The music allows me to be, um, you know, unchained. Like I can, I can go in so many directions and do whatever I want to do. The, the music is, is in a free space. Battle rap is more confined, you know, in terms of just like, it's a, it's a it's an objective there, you know what I mean? It's it's rules and regulations to it in a sense. Like you're there to try to outsmart your opponent and uh, outwit them and all this other shit. So it's everybody's pretty much doing the same thing. But in music, you know, you go in the booth to be yourself. 
and uh, we all different. So nobody could do you better than better than you. You know what I'm saying? So like, when I go to make music, man, it's it's to get shit off my chest. It's to be introspective, and it's it's to be introspective in hopes that I can connect with somebody, or or make music that relates to other people going through the same shit. Since we all having this human experience together, you know what I'm saying? So the music is more for connective purposes. Obviously, battle rap is is destructive. You know what I mean? Like it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's entertaining, um, and you know, still sharp and still, it, it gets it gets your mind working. You know, and all those good things. But uh, but music will always be my focus because it allows me to be me. And it allows me to be free. I heard that I heard that. So I was looking, uh, you uh, were asking recently about the uh, the Elevate clothing, you know what I'm saying, the apparel that you had um, and still have at this point, and also your new clothing line, man. How has that whole process been going with having your own apparel? Yeah, it's been dope, man. Well, so what happened was, you know, long story short, um, I was making apparel through a company uh, – of of a homie I knew um, that I grew, that I went to school with, um, and that was through mercenaries. Um, you know, the, we was having branding issues. I don't think the brand. A lot of those hats weren't selling, and and I was personally telling him, I don't think I don't think my brand matched with his brand. His brand was, um, for lack of a better term or lack of a better way to put it, his his brand was kind of whitewashed. You know what I'm saying? Like it was. The, the representation was a little different mm. on his website. Um, he was kind of pushing a, a different, like, all-inclusive agenda. Not to say that I'm not all-inclusive. Um, I'm just I'm just black first. You feel me? I'm just black first. So that's just the way I give it up. And so uh, that wasn't really working out. So I reached out to uh, to these brothers I've been building with. They, they've been making me personal pieces. Like, they made me the, uh, the Mike Brown hat. Uh, they made me... Uh, uh, the uh, red, the red, uh, the red hoodie that is EK. Um, I reached out to them to help me develop a new brand, and they said, "Hey, check it. Instead of you developing a new brand, why don't you just come on board with what we already have going on? You can you can help the company build, you can help the company grow. We'll give you a share of the company." So they brought me in as a partner. Um, so that's that's Kinfolk Clothing. So that's the new brand that I've I've been brought on as a partner, and. Uh, they basically already had the shit popping. Now, you know, now with my, you know, it's, it's now it's three of us. You know, three heads is better than one. You know what I'm saying? So we all collectively coming together with different ideas and concepts and uh, really trying to get the apparel off the ground. Um, and it's doing really, really well at this point. Um, we got the woke as fuck hats that are really popping right now. The, the, the camo hats. You know what I mean? And I got the, the camo jacket I wore against Swave. We got some really dope pieces, man. And, um, we're looking to drop some more dope pieces in the fall. So I'm I'm just excited and uh, honored and privileged that those brothers brought me on to be a partner with them. I heard that. I heard that. And I wanted to ask you this, uh, this outside of battle rap, but I remember about a month ago I seen uh, that you were actually at an event in San Diego. The name is escaping me right now. I just had it. Yeah, but you were at it. Yeah, how was that event, man? It was dope, man. It was really, really dope. Um, it was just, it shit felt like a family reunion, although I didn't know nobody. You know what I mean? It was just like, mm. it was that type of vibe. It was really, really Afrocentric. It was really, really conscious. Um, yeah, man, it was dope. Um, got a chance to meet Rod Digger, Lord Jamar, uh, uh, Queen Afulia. Um, it was just a lot of dope people there that I met that are part of this conscious movement and understand it. So, you know, when you, when you go to that type of event and you're just around people that, that think like you dress, like you act, like you talk, like you, man, it's just a beautiful, beautiful space to be in. So I was honored to, to, to partake in that, man. Shout out to the homegirl Kateria. Um, she's the one that, uh, put that together and, uh, yeah, man, it was dope. It was really, really beautiful, uh, spiritual, just dope energy, man. Really dope vibes. I heard that. I heard that. That's something that I noticed with you and that I got to commend you for is a lot of times people come in battle rap, man, and say they have a message or something they want to put out there. 
and because of how the culture is and because of it's like a like you said, they want punches, they just wanna hear street talk, you know what I'm saying? They just wanna hear a whole bunch of gang shit in their their rounds. People will water down their message, but you've always been very consistent in your battles where you still incorporate and give messages and create conversations for the person who's viewing it. Like that's always been hella dope to me, man, that you stay consistent with that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. That's the goal. It, you know, it just it just comes from a good place. It comes from a place of asking and honesty and truth. So I think that those things always resonate with other human beings, man. So I think that what, I think that's why a lot of my shit just go, you know, last and and and, and have replay value because it's real shit and it, it's, it's it connects, you know. I heard that. I heard that. So I was looking at this uh, <laughs> at this tweet. This had me cracking up because this is about the truest thing I've seen online. Is when people battle you, they immediately try to get in their conscious bag. You yeah. know, they go and buy a couple of the hidden colors. You know, gang they self up on hidden <laughs> colors. They go buy a fresh dashiki <laughs> and all that. And they yeah, feel yeah. like they in the aura enough to go ahead and battle you. Why do you think that is, like, people really just, like, they go to that extent when they battle you, but it's non-existent or anything else? Yeah, man, I think um, it's interesting, man. I just, I think a lot of these brothers is either scared to be themselves, meaning they do think about the things that I talk about. They do have the same, the same conversations I have in the ring. They have those conversations in real life, um, and they're just supposed to apply it into a battle. Either that, or they just give faith, or they just like, oh, let me, you know, let me try to go, you know, thought for thought, or woke for woke, or be that. You know what I mean? That's just fake. So, I mean, both ways is fake. You know, if you are, quote, quote, woke, and you do understand the things that are going on, and you uh, don't think it's important to speak about those things in your art, then you're fake. If you're purposely trying to speak about those things in your art just because you're battling me and you're trying to, like, contend, you know, with my intellectualism and you're trying to go, you know, whatever, whatever, then that's fake as well. You know what I'm saying? So either way, it's fake. I mean, I, I, I have a hard time respecting battlers who only get conscious like that when they battle me. I would love to see it just regularly. You know what I'm saying? I would just love to see it, like, you know, in, in all your battles. Like why? Why don't we see that in all your battles? You know what I'm saying. So, but that's how the game go with me, man. You you rest assured that when you battle, when when I'm battling somebody, they're gonna try to um, have something to say in terms of like, I I'm good too. I understand. I do this and that for the people. I'm part of the movement and all that other shit. You know that we've never heard them ever say before. Yeah, my thing is like. If you've never, like, I, I, only way I can say it is that if you've never been about what you wrote down on your, you know what I'm saying, on your little notebook or what you just text on your phone, if you've never been about that, man, delete it. Don't even say it. Like, because it's not really a, a reason to bring it up. Like, you could just be creative, man, and do something completely different. Like, I could understand yeah. somebody like, okay, some people come at Lux and are like, oh, you dressed up as the preacher. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you was trying to talk to people, but then over here you're doing da 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 da. Like, I can understand, but if you're making a whole entire approach in a battle where it's like, I want to try and talk to you about what you're talking about, but you don't really have a reference point for it, it's like, come on, man. Like, you could have just got creative with just rapping or just punching or something else outside of trying to go to this extent. Because there's not a yeah. feel to it. Like, I don't know how to explain it any better, but it's like there's a certain feel that you get from people when it's real and when it's coming from an authentic place versus somebody who just studied something for a couple months and then went to battle with it. You know, it kind of lacks a Nothing. certain substance, in my opinion. Agreed. Absolutely agree. It sounds forced. It sounds contrived. Um, yeah, man, I agree with you wholeheartedly. So let me ask you this. Is there anybody in the battle rap culture that you personally have seen where you like, 
man, I we could have a great conversation on that level of whether it's consciousness or um, just anything in that realm. Have you ever seen anybody who kind of gives you that that feel where it's like, okay, this could be a great conversation to have? Um, you mean you mean to battle them, right? You don't mean just talk, chop it up yes. with them for a battle. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm gonna sound cliche right here when I say this, but you know, all the like, like the like the legends, man, like, like Mook, um, Hollow, uh, Lux, you know, those guys. These are guys that I've been around, chopped it up with, and I know that they're extremely bright, they're extremely smart. Um, so those three guys in particular, I think, um, oh. And uh, Iron Solomon, Iron Solomon mm. as well. Those that would four be a guys, crazy so. battle! Oh my god. Yeah, and that you know, it's funny, man. Cause you, I just, I just trust the universe to manifest things. Um, so the Iron, Iron Solomon, me versus Iron Solomon is starting to get thrown around more and more. I think that the more successful that I get it's going to continue to be thrown around because they know how smart he is. You know, him being a, a white dude, a Jewish dude, you know, him being really smart, me being a, a smart, you know, pro-black African dude. I think that it, um, obviously on paper, you know what I'm saying, it, it looks like a, like a dope fight. So I think that's getting thrown around a lot. So uh, that's something that, that might potentially manifest itself. And Iron is, is a cool dude, man. I've chopped it up with him multiple times, texted him, um, I, I definitely keep in contact with that with that dude. He's a good good brother right there. So so yeah, man, those guys, Lux, Iron, Mook, Hollow, I think all of those all of those dudes are super, super intelligent. And um if we were to ever square off in a ring, that would be, you know, some really, really dope, high level, intricate type of conversation going on for sure. I heard, I heard that. You know, I definitely would love to see the Iron Battle. Obviously, the Lux Battle. I feel, I feel like it has to happen, man. Like, not even just because of like the reasons people put out there at first. Like, oh, this person sounds like him, or you know, what I'm saying all that. It's just on a a conversation level. I think you guys would just that'd be an epic battle, in my opinion. Hold on, hold on, one second, King. One second. Yeah, my fault, King. Um, yeah, oh, no, those are definitely. Yeah, those would definitely be some 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 dope, interesting battles, man, for sure, bro, for sure, for sure. So I was hearing you were saying uh, recently, I think it was on one of the watches, that you and Gotti actually are looking to do a two on two. Like, is that? something that we would see this year, or is that something just in the future, maybe next year that we would see? Yeah, that's already booked. That's a, that's a guarantee. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, gonna that's, that's a guarantee. <laughs> that's going to be crazy. <laughs> the narratives that you and Gotti could come up with, man, oh, my gosh. Yeah, bro. Yep, yep, I don't yep. think Battle that's, Rap that's, has ever had that. Like, nah, see, from the I background that yourself see. and Gotti come from and the authenticity, I don't th- – have we seen that on a ga- – like, on a – you merge an intelligence with verifiable, authentic street and gang history, and then you – like, I don't think we've really seen that before where, like, I'm saying, like, the narratives that y'all can come up with, that's going to be interesting, man. Nah, I don't think we've seen it before at all. I don't think we've seen it before at all. And I don't think that we've seen two people team up at the same time that they're, you know, on the rise, you know, like, you know, heating up. Their careers are heating up at the same time. Um, Usually we see people kind of go on a crash trajectory like to where they have to battle each other. Um, But I think me and Gigi have built such a camaraderie um, and respect for each other and what what each other does 
you're not really interested in battling each other, you know what I'm saying? So it made more sense to team up. You know what I mean? I, I personally think if we put in the work, if we put in the proper work and preparation, um, I think we could be the most dangerous two-on-two ever. I don't, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't, from, from Ilmac, Thesaurus, uh, Marv, Quest One, uh, Gun Titles, whoever, I, I think we could be better than all of them. If uh, if we work hard enough, you know what I'm saying like that's that's, that's going to be the key thing. We gotta we gotta make sure we put in the work. But um, as far as skill set and potential and authenticity and um, chemistry, uh, we seem to already have all of that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm definitely looking forward to it, man. Doing the two and two was definitely on my battle rap bucket list. You feel me? Just to do something to to actually have fun with. The two on two is more fun. I don't. I don't look at it as a stressful thing. It's more fun, man. It's more of a team sport, so it's more fun. So, I'm definitely looking forward to that, bro. It's gonna be. It's gonna be dope, and it's gonna be. Uh, the first one we do is gonna be in California, so it should be dope. Mm. Oh man, that's <laughs> that makes it even crazier, right there. That it's in the West. Like that. Okay, I like the sound yeah. of that. I'm about to try and be in the building for that. <laughs> In the building. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you're going to have to make it down for sure. So, right now in the West, you know, we it's like this surge where, in my opinion, I believe the West runs battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Which is all the people who we actively have out here. Daylight, yourself, Danny, Geechee, Ill Mac. If you want to add in the thesauruses. You know what I'm saying? Grizz now is, is on the come up. Like, I, I feel like Disaster, obviously, you're talking about all the people coming from here. Like, I feel like we running this right now. Um, yeah. So when you guys are going into these events, and obviously now you have three of the LSC going into the Strike 2.5, do y'all look at it in a way or do y'all ever, like, have them conversations where it's like, man, look, we run this shit and we about to go out there and show out and put on for the West? Yeah, I mean, that's always the vibe, man, especially on the road, you feel me? Road games, like the last one we just had, me, Danny, went out there to New York, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, it's, it's that is the vibe. You know, you know you're in the East, and you know you got to, uh, you know, you got to come with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you, you know that. You know that the West has always been fighting for lyrical respects in, in, in rap, period, since day one. You know what I mean? Since the late 80s. You know what I'm So that's always in the mind, man. And uh, me being such a student of the game and having so much respect for, for New York and for East Coast hip hop, I'm honored to, to, to play a part in, uh, in getting our respect from the East. You know? So I, I look forward to it. I, I look the challenge. That, but yeah, you are one of the ones that you look back and say, what, you know, 2015, 2016, in that time period, like, you were one of the ones who's actually, like, holding the West down where you made people outside of here pay attention to that, like, to what's going on out here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. your battle was strict, got a lot of attention, you were daylight, obviously, you know, that battle turned out how it did, but still people was paying attention. The Danny battle, obviously, that was the best battle that year and had so much attention that you were one of the driving forces. And now you see, like, Gotti has, you know what I'm saying, made that surge to being one of the, you know what I'm saying, I think he's the face of the West at this point, but it's like you were one of the, 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 the originals, man, that really during a time period when it was only people could mention Daylight, Diz, and Danny, you came in and was like, "Nah, we got other, we got other shooters out here, man. Y'all gonna have to pay attention to them." That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. Yeah, bro. And I feel like you know, I was the main one, like banging the West. Though it's one thing to just be like, you look at somebody, you look at Daylight or Disaster, you're like, "Oh yeah, they're from the West," you know. But it's another thing to be like, to be the, to be a nigga that's gonna rap about it like that, you know what I mean? And like say it in the actual battle. You know what I mean? Like, this is the West. <laughs> you feel me? So, um, I, I pride myself on that, bro. Like, I really do. I'm I'm, I'm very territorial. You know, I, I love I love the coast. I love what we represent. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm going to always fight for that and defend that, man. And it's a beautiful thing just to see what Gotti's doing, man, because 
I'm in no way, shape, form in competition with my brother. Like, I think that he is, he absolutely is the West, you know what I mean? Because he's the most authentic thing we have in battle rap, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not no gang banger like that, you know what I mean? Like, Geechee Geechee represents gang culture to the fullest. So, it's dope, man. It's it's dope to see him, um, him get the recognition he deserves it's dope that the West is getting the recognition that, that we deserve collectively, man. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy to be one of the dudes that um that kept the torch lit, you know what I'm saying, from from Diz to, to Danny to, to Daylight to me to whatever, now to Geechee, you know what I'm saying. We we all keeping the torch lit. We all holding that shit, you know, simultaneously. 